In this particular section, we are going to go ahead and find some examples of limits um, because there's there's some in the book, but you know the more you see, the better you are. When you have a limit and your x is approaching a particular x value, your first job is to do direct substitution as if it were functional notation. Um, the only time we have issues like you heard from the previous video, is if you have zero in the denominator, then we might have to do some more things to find out what my limit is. So I'm going to do direct substitution here. If I put 4 in for x, I end up in the numerator with the 2, the denominator of 4. 2 divided by 4 is 1 half, and that's how I would work my problem. Now you also saw in the uh, other video that you can also get numbers real close to 4 to either side. I want to do some storing so you can see storing and, and this is another way to verify, to check yourself. So if I come in from the left 4, I'm going to put in 3 point um, bunches of 9's. You hit your STO, I'm going to store it in for X and then you hit enter. As long as I'm using this calculator, my x value is going to be that until I store something on top of it. It will not hurt in any calculations or any graphing, so it doesn't hurt to store. Now, my original problem was x minus 2. I'm going to have to put the numerator in parentheses. To play it safe, you should put your denominator in parentheses also. So let's see what I get close to. 4.49987 as close to 0.5. If you use more nines, you get closer. Now this is coming in from the left. I also have to do it from the right. Remember, I have to check both sides. So I'm going to put in 4.00. Let me get a little bit closer. Let me store that in for x. I don't want to have to type my function in, so I'll be doing second enter second enter until I get to what I what expression I want back and then I just hit enter. If you'll notice this is above the 4 so I'm going to be a little bit above 0.5 but in both situations coming in from the left and right I am getting to close to 0.5. This substitution takes a little bit of time it does work if you can do direct substitution that's even faster. Let's see the next problem. I've got a piecewise function. You've got some problems in the homework that's like this. I can use the linear function as long as x is less than negative 2. I can use my square root function as long as my x values are greater than negative 2. Now, a moment ago I was talking about coming in from the left and coming in from the right. Well, notation-wise, this is how you see it with a sign after your number. If it's positive, that means I'm coming in from the positive side or your right side. If it's negative, I'm coming in from the left side or you're, um, you know, coming in from the negative side. But in this one, I have to go to the function that is coming in uh, from my right hand side, and that would be my square root function because I can use this function as long as my x values are greater than negative 2. Now I graph this. You don't have to do this, but I wanted you to see the picture. So coming in from the left is my square root function. Now, even though it says I can use this function as long as x is greater than negative 2, I can try direct substitution, and if it works, then I've got myself an answer. So, but look at this. As I come in from my right-hand side, it looks like I'm getting close to a y value of 0. Well, if I substitute negative 2 into this, square root of negative 2 plus 2 is square root of 0, which is legal, and it is 0. Now, the next one, I need to approach negative 2. Here's my negative 2 coming in from my negative side or left-hand side. And as I get on my straight line coming in from the left, it looks like I'm approaching a y value of 1. Well, if you substitute negative 2 into your linear function, notice you do get 1 for that. 
so my answer is 1. Now, on this problem, if I'm not given a directional value coming in from my right-hand side or left-hand side, then I have to do both because it wants to know what is the y value I'm approaching as x approaches negative 2. And if you saw in the other video, if these values aren't the same, then this limit does not exist. Now this next piece down here, the d part, the actual functional value when x does equal negative 2. Well, like I read a little bit earlier, I can use the linear function when x is less than negative 2. I can use the square root function when x is greater than negative 2. Since I do not have an or equal, I have no place to put this value, so it doesn't exist either. Alright, I've got a few more examples. I've got a rational expression. They want me to find the limit of this function as x approaches 3. Remember, the first thing you need to try every single time is direct substitution. So let me quit my graph. Let me clear this out. Let's store in 3. 3, store in for x. Type in your function, and because it's a rational function, I need parentheses. All that clicking is my mouse. That's how I have to do that on here, if you hear the clicking. Now before you leave, always double check to make sure you put everything in correctly. Now I know some of y'all would like to do this but work all by hand, but guys that takes a lot of time and we want to use what tools we've got and every test is open-ended where you can use your calculator. So I've st stored all that in. Let's see what it equals. 1.6. Remember you can frack it. So I would take either one of these answers. So let's see what I've got. So 1.6 or 8.5, which is what I had. All right. So let's try storing in 2. 2, store in for x. I can either type it back in. There's another way you can access or pull back what you had before. If you do second enter, second enter, notice I'm scrolling back. And you scroll back until you get to the function you want, which is that. Hit enter. My answer here is 1.25. And if I frack that, so let's see if I put down 1.25 and 5 fourths. Actually, it looks 15 twelfths. Uh, so I guess I did this a different way on here. But if you do them individually, the numerator and then the denominator, you would have that, but that is 1.25. So I'd accept those. If you have it fractional form, reduce it. The only time I do not like decimals is say I, this was 7 thirds. Uh, I'd rather see the 7 thirds. All right, negative 1. Let's see what happens with negative 1. Let me pull my calculator back up. Negative 1, store in for x. Second, enter second enter second enter there's my original function all right i've got division by zero don't ever do a quit just do a go to and so here's the issue so i know the denominator is zero because it just told me that let's see if the numerator is zero i'm going to delete my denominator So the numerator is 0. So I end up with 0 over 0. Remember, this is called an indeterminate form. It also means that they have a, a factor in common. You're going to have to factor. Now, there's a little key to this. If x is approaching negative 1, that would be the same thing as x equals negative 1. Remember when I substituted it in? Pull the negative 1 back over, so x plus 1 would actually be my factor. I'm trying to show you another way to look at this a little bit faster. x plus 1 is my missing factor, so if you look at what do I lack, 
then you'll be able to do this is just another way of factoring this which might be a little bit quicker so since these cancel out those were the ones that were giving me issues because when I put negative 1 in that's why I had 0 so now this is a new function that in a way fills up the hole made at negative 1 and now I can do direct substitution so let me get my calculator out of the way so I can see negative 1 remember is still stored in so I've got 3x minus 1 divide by x plus 2 and it gives me negative 4 so as x approaches negative 1 my y value is approaching negative 4 if you graph the original before you cancel these factors and if you could get in close enough at negative 1, negative 4, you would actually see there's a hole there. Um, if you put this one in, the one that's in reduced form, this would fill up the hole. That's why I can do direct substitution. You might try that graphically and see if you can see that. But Let's see if I put in negative 4 down here. And there we are because once you get rid of the factors, cancel those out, those were get the ones that were giving me issues, that's why we had 0 over 0, then I can do direct substitution. So if you have division by 0, see if the numerator is 0. If it is, they've got factors in common. Now, if you cancel any like factors and you end up with uh, a non-zero number over 0, then that would mean that your limit does not exist. So that's all for this, this time. So go and try some of those problems. Thank you.